Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, just going to pause just a couple of seconds to make sure everyone can hear me and see me okay today. I think so. Just let the stream catch up to me. Thanks for joining. Um, I see lots of people from all over the world, which is really um, wonderful and um, humbling. So um, I um, don't have a big agenda for today other than to paint for you, um, which is really cool. It feels really good. I do want to just make an acknowledgement today of the gravity of the moment in the world, and I'm very happy to be able to share my devotion to to art and constructive creativity um, that's that's what I do that's what I can offer and so I think this moment is really uniquely revelatory of the depth of beauty of nature and um, as artists we can um, amplify that and bring that to the fore um, and express it as our love of art and that's what I you know um, strive to do every time I step up to the easel so um, so that's my intention when I'm painting for you guys um, so um, that's gonna try to bring it today um, never know you you know hopefully I'll get lucky and that will all come through in a way that expresses itself as a, a piece of art that um, is uh, does that some kind of justice um, I, so it's really cool um, today let's let's paint if you're following along today that's wonderful the more the merrier right more more of that love more of that expression of creativity um, but before I start today, I just have a just a couple quick things. The watercolor workshop um, uh, sale is ending, but we wanted to e extend it to anybody that wants to get it um, t today um, while we're doing the streaming. So then it's going to be over. Um, also, watch for monthly year two. It's coming really soon. We're almost there. We're getting ready, um, and I'm super, super excited about it. Um, and then just I want to again mention that the demo here today will be available for sale on Daily Paintworks. I usually post it. I usually kind of go for a quick walk after the, the demo just to wind down and <laughs> um, what, get a little exercise. So I, when I come back, I'll post it on Daily Paintworks, um, hopefully. Okay. I just want to talk about what it is that I'm painting today. It's actually pretty, in some ways, it's the same location that I painted a few weeks back, a kind of beautiful um, tracery of forest. Um, it's Colorado, and there it is. We got the, the reference photo up there for you. This one's a little bit different, though, because it does, the other reference photo didn't have a, a particularly strong focal point, whereas this one, this one really does. It's got the, of course, the uh, lovely soft pathway leading back into the, um, the distance here. There's a couple of things that I really love about this photo, this little, little bits of light poking through the, the tree line here. Um, also, of course, this lovely little path. Oh, okay, out here. Yeah, okay. Yeah, here we go. That's better. Thanks, Kevin. Um, the other thing about this that isn't quite really obvious, maybe you can see it in the reference, is that there's a little hint of some light crossing the path. And I think that I'm going to take, take that as a little cue and maybe exaggerate that a little bit because I think that will be really nice and also help the viewer's eye get down that path, draw a little bit more attention to it. So I'll be doing that. A couple of other things that I have in mind for it. Is, um, so um, a couple of years ago I did this. This is a copy of a painting. It's on, um, I, it, it sold a while, a number of years ago. But this is that same location, and um, I like this painting, though there are things about it that I think are a little tight. So 
um, but there are things about it that I like. So I'm going to put this down and where I can see it while I'm painting because, you know, I want to be reminded. And I do that a lot in the studio. I try to put things around me, work that I've done or photographs of work that I've done that, oh, yeah, I, um, I solved the problem that I was looking to solve with that, so I try not to have to solve it again. And um, in, the, in the same regard, there's this painting. This was a large oil painting. It was a four by four foot oil painting. And the colors are really exaggerated in it. And I have in mind to do that a little bit today, to be a little playful and push the color. So, you know, there's this idea of your, you could be, the door's gonna slam, Kevin. Whoop. Um, you could be inventing color or um, exact, or, or I usually am not so much inventing color as I am maybe pushing it or exaggerating it, um, just trying to be a little exploratory and playful with it. So that's my intent today. You know, sometimes you get up here and, you know, you have an idea and sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. So we'll see what happens in here um, as I'm working. So I have the reference photo printed out because I, I like to hold on to it for whatever reason. It just... Makes me, makes me comfortable and happy. I also have it over here on my iPad. And people ask me, which one do you look at? Well, I kind of, kind of both, but mostly the one in my hand, which is kind of funny. Okay, um, so what else? Green leaf color fix paper. Oh, the other thing is I wanted to mention. So last week, I, you know, I'm running out of Terry Ludwig's um, darks, the the eggplant color. So see this little tray? This little tray, an uh, uh, artist friend of mine, Linda Barnicott from Philadelphia, when I taught a workshop there, she gave me this tray. This is her artwork on it. And I, I always put this right here on my um, easel. You guys can't see it. It's out of, out of frame. But I have a little tray on my easel. And I always put this. Linda's tray sits there all the time. So I've got Terry's little I had to go through my bits and pieces to find um, enough of those darks for, for what I need today. Um, I also, oh, I wanted to say color-wise, the local color of this photo, yeah, <laughs> the local color of this photo, um, this sort of soft red, I, I think that's really beautiful against these greens. So that, that's the other thing that I want to really, you know, try to um, try to get. Okay. All right. We are um, going to get going here. Okay. Yay. So, yeah, so we've got the palette cam going today. It's so, I'm so excited that we have that. That's really, really nice. And um, so uh, I hope you guys like it too. All right, so here's my um, image area. You see I'm coming in off the edge of my paper a little bit. I like to do that so that I have some wiggle room compositionally. So I've got a nice bounding box, but it's not to the edge of the paper. If I put it to the edge, then I'm stuck. So it, this gives me just a little bit of flexibility. This area over here is going to give me a nice area in which to make marks so I can make color tests. I also can make tests on whether that, that particular stick that I've picked up, is it going to make the kind of mark that I have the intention of making? Because sometimes, you know, the, the different sticks, they, they, they get shaped differently. And when you put them down, they maybe don't make exactly the kind of mark that you want. So I want to test over here before I go over to my piece. Now that helps me to keep things um, fresher and from getting muddy. I'm not making marks that are unnecessary. I'm you know, trying to be as intentional with the marks as I possibly can and not put product over product when it's not necessary. Okay, so that's that. All right, let's just get in right into this. So I'm just going to think about this composition and I'm just going to divide, think about where do I want that focal point. Now, this is kind of good, this composition. If you think about the rule of thirds, if I was to divide this kind of equally into thirds, it would be about here. And so I could say that the end of that path is down here. Now, 
interestingly enough, this, this path is right about here. So I've got this area and this area. So do, do I want that or do I want to bring it down just slightly? And I think I want to bring it down just slightly so that the division of space, I've got more space on top and a little bit less here. I don't want this nearing the center line. It's not, but it's kind of close. So just make sure that it's not. So this is going to be where my the end of my path sits. And then, then I have to re also think about, see this path? See that right? It's, it's kind of close to the corner. And I don't really want that. I definitely don't want that path coming right there to that corner. That's weird. So do I want it to come up or do I want it to move it over? And I actually think that I want it to come up. So I'll make it more like that. So some, I, my path is going to do that. Then there's some cool little trees back here. Then there's a nice strong... Um, area of these pines that are sort of um, framing the more deciduous trees. There's this cool little, looks like a, a, sp a spruce that's kind of right on the edge. I'm going to scooch it over just a little bit because I don't want it right on, here's my edge of frame. I don't want that right there on the edge of frame just enough so it doesn't feel like I'm like it's squashed in there. I can get a little little attitude with it. Think about these guys. I want a little gesture to them, these guys too. So I can be a little playful with the the how the um, gesture of the trees. So then, now, now if I think about the, the foliage mass, the overarching foliage mass that I'm developing and the shape, so I want to think about what is this shape? What's this, this shape right there? Right, because that's important. What, what negative shapes am I creating with the positive ones? And then here, right here, are some pretty strong verticals. You need, in order for these to feel like they have some gesture, I have to have something countering that. So I need some almost verticals to be um, to 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 say something relative to them. And now here's my red vegetation in here. And um, Marla, mm -hmm. just, to, just to remind everybody, you're using a blue spruce new, new pastel for sketching? Yes, I am using a blue spruce new pastel for sketching. So I almost always do because I like it. Actually, in fact, I want a bigger one. Let me see if I've got something a little... Yeah, this one's a little better. This is one of those sticks that I have a bunch of them in my palette. I don't have too many repeats. Now, here's another strong, almost straight vertical. There's a couple other ones in here. There's some... And then the vegetation comes in here. Then there's some nice grasses in here. Now... I also, so this foreground, I'm going to keep this pretty simple. I don't want to get into a whole lot of detail in here. There are these rocks in here. Do I want those rocks? Now, sometimes I see students, they, you know, they, you can get these rocks in, and if you, uh, but the, they're not the story. I, I can make a suggestion of them, but I don't, it's really easy to get those to be um, the, the, where those end up being super dominant, and I don't want that. So I could just leave them out. There's a little pine 
nestled in here, which is kind of cool. I'll try to get that too. So that's looking pretty good. There's a little bit darker tree. I think that would be cool right there. So I think I'm pretty good. Then there's a there's a some idea of this foliage kind of enveloping this space, and I'm looking through to the light. So I'm keeping in mind that. Now I want to also think about, so I've thought about this V shape for here. Now what's going to happen with the light? What's the light shape back here? What's that going to do? I'm going to want to consider that. It's not, it's not developed yet, but it will be, so I want to keep in mind what that's going to be. So thinking ahead a little bit. Okay, I want to think about the edge of this path. I want it to be, um, it's, it's kind of hidden. It's got a quality to it that's very soft and lovely. And so I, I want that, I want to keep that in mind. So I don't want this to be super hard edged. And I, I want to get the, the perspective of it so it really, goes back and around. Okay. And there's a little, there's some dark back here. That dark is going to be important because it's, that little dark and then there's some, and then there's the pines, this grouping here. Okay. That's good. So that, that little dark right there is, um, yeah, and there's some in here. There's also a kind of dark in here. There's all these pines kind of in between there. That's good. Okay. We have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you pick the green paper? The question is, why did I pick the green paper? Well, it's a lot of green, so I think that made sense in this case. That's not always why I pick the paper. Sometimes I'm going to pick um, complementary. Um, it just depends on what I'm feeling like. I look at the reference and think, okay, how, you know, how do I see myself going about doing the painting? Uh, in this case, there's a lot of green. And it's kind of, there's a lot of middle green in the painting, so I think it kind of made sense. Um, but that's not always the way I'm orienting myself. And to be quite honest, um, you know, I want to paint. My, my intent, when I come out here to the studio, I do not let myself get, um, uh, I don't let, what I have on hand, do I have the perfect thing be the barrier, be a barrier to painting? So if it's not exactly right and I have, say, you know, say I've got like some dark blue or burgundy or terracotta, like the last time I did something like this, I had the only piece of color fix paper I had was terracotta. Like, okay, I can work with that because I am committed to coming out here and painting. Okay, so let's get going with some pastel, some color. So remember I said I wanted to push the color. Okay, so how am I going to do that? I, I kind of see it as, especially in the tree branches, them being really blue and purple, definitely not gray. They appear to me in the references very blue. So I'm going to make sure I get at least that. Now, I, I'm thinking I'm going to exaggerate it. A lot of times I think, oh, I'm going to really push it and exaggerate it, and it winds up being more like what it really is than I, than I think. So um, we'll, we'll see what happens. Um, now I'm going to start in with what is the easiest thing for me to start with because I always want to do that. I just I want to be able to get in. So what's the biggest, easiest thing for me to start with? And you know what? In this case, there's a lot of green. It feels a little overwhelming. What feels kind of easy to pick is that red. 
so that's that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start with the re that red, and I'm gonna. This feels like about right for some of this. Kind of middle, middle dark. It's all in shadow, pretty much. So I'm gonna keep that in mind. Really light touch. I want to stay as light as I can for as long as I can in terms of pressure, not value. Just really light touch so that I'm not building layers unnecessarily. I see that color sneaking in over here a little bit. So where else can it go? I see it a little bit in here so I can sneak it in. And we have another question. Mm -hmm. um, why, why color fix instead of pastel matte? Um, yes. The person is um, the um, person. Hi. <laughs> um, why, why color fix instead of pastel matte? Um, you know, I used to paint on color fix all the time, and I, I had it, and I thought, I'm just going to use color fix. I like, I like them both, so, you know, I think it's good to bounce around a little bit. Okay, so next, what's n the next thing? I, I want to get some of this kind of middle green in, middle to dark green, just to, to see. And I, I, I think something like that, maybe even, maybe even a tad darker. Let's see. Uh, also another yeah. statement. Uh, yeah. You've never made your own pastels or anything like that, right? The question is, have I ever made my own pastels? I have made them. Um, I find it um, very laborious. And so it's not easy. No, I, it's not easy. Um, I mean, I mean, it depends on what easy is to you. Um, I find it, um, again, my whole intention when I come out to the studio is to paint. And yeah, there's some amount of when you're out here just kind of messing around with paint and you're doing other tasks in the studio, all of that is, you know, those are necessary too. But um, my goal is to be painting and so there's so many great pastels out there on the market and that the people do really well. And so I, I just find it not, not a great use of my time to, to make, make them. And I, I don't, you know, I know you can save the little bits and you can, you can put them in a mortar and pestle um, and crunch them together and add a little water and roll roll those your little bits into you know new pieces well the thing about that is you're, you're going to get like a you know a, a, a you're never going to be able to repeat that and um they it does the the bits do have the gum tagaranth in them so you're you know you can do that but again i just fe feel like yeah i don't do it Okay, so I'm just getting some pastel in here, nice and thin, just to get some color in, some glaze layers, just to start establishing my value masses throughout the painting. Just getting, getting some, something down. I gotta start somewhere. And so, this feels about right. Um, so I'm just going to keep going here. Um, what else do I want to put down? Back in here, it feels like it's a little bit lighter. Maybe not quite that light. Let's see. Oh, that's the same stick. Maybe I'll start there. Now remember, I wanted that little light. It's right about here to cross the path. So I'll just keep that in mind. And come up in here. Just beginning to get get some something down. I 
feel like there's some almost gray out there at the edges. Oh, maybe it, maybe I want it to be a little bluer. In here. Right on the edges. Okay. Um, I um, already, you know, feel pretty, pretty good about what's going on here. I want to get some of that yellow in, 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 be, in the distance. Um, looking at that, I want that. Maybe not quite so bright. You know, head to head to this. Sneak that in in between the branches here and there. Again, I gotta start somewhere before I can really. I need to be able to see everything as a whole before I make other choices. Quick question. Yeah. Um, also teach oil painting. Yes, I teach oil painting. And what else? And I teach watercolor, <laughs> so watercolor sketching. And I also, um, I I've had a lot of the the big paintings that you see behind you. Um, well, we'll show you on the um, behind me um, are acrylics, and I um, have had a lot of requests to do um, some lessons on acrylics, and I finally. Have decided I'm going to do that. When you bring in a new medium, it's always a kind of a, a thing. But I'm going to do that. Okay. And um, um, like normal, you always arrange your pastels by value, hue, saturation. Yes, my this my palette here is set up um, via the way I learned color theory that every um, the the three aspects responsible for every color's um, appearance is um, first value, is it light or is it dark? It's hue, is it, is it, is it red, is it blue, is it purple? And it's it intensity. Is it, is it super, super intense? Or is it dull or less saturated, right? So that's the way I have it set up. And having my palette organized like this helps me paint. I, it's faster and more fun and more dynamic because I have the palette set up like this. I don't have to struggle to find things. It's set up so that I can play and orchestrate the color much more easily. All right, see, I'm already seeing my way into this. It's good. It's my little little suggestion of rocks. I don't need to, all I need is just a little suggestion. I don't need to go overboard. Your, your, the viewer is going to uh, do a lot of the work for me. I don't need to say everything. Continue on, on layering. Uh, want it, this a little softer. See, this I wanted a little duller. I felt like that was a little too intense. 
So I want to settle that back. And the reason I won't think this is too intense is because this is, I'm planning a, a nice bright light coming across this path. And if this was too intense, it wouldn't read. So, so everything is all, you know, relationships, relationships, relationships. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and get some of this in a little stronger. So now that I've got, I've got things kind of going, kind of rolling, I can make some uh, stronger commitments to some of the shapes and marks and areas. But I can, but I'm sneaking up on it. I don't need to, you know, you, you can sneak up. But you don't need to go full bore. I, I'm making decisions as it builds as a whole. One thing I need to do now is start getting in some of these tree trunks. That I need to make some commitments to. I need to make a commitment to some, some kind of value for the sky. And then I'm really going to know where I'm at. Um, until I do those two things, I, you know, this is all just kind of a, you know, kind of a mess. Well, here's a question. Mm -hmm. um, if a painting takes more time to finish, do you put your color choices back in the palette that day or keep them out until it's done? Oh, that's a really good question. Um, the, the, I, I'll repeat the question. If, I, if a painting takes, a pastel painting takes more than a day, do I put my color choices back in my palette or do I leave them out until it's done? And, um, you know, I guess I, I do leave them out until it's done because I really want to see what I've worked with. Um, uh, pretty much, uh, like, so for instance, I, I tried this out, I think it's this one, yeah, or no, not quite, but something like that, this one, um, I went, okay, do I want to go that light on the tree trunks? No, I don't, so I looked down here on my tray, and I picked this one up, and I think that this is right, at least for now, for the, the trees. Uh, so I, I'm using what I've already got going. And I'm, so in doing that, I'm keeping my palette as limited as I can for as long as I can. And I think that's a good thing. You know, I don't want to start adding on too much confusing stuff um, unless I really have to um, and I so yeah I guess I hadn't really thought about it if I'm starting something else um, I, d I don't usually do that I guess I, f I finish one thing and then move on to the next though I, I do I will have several underpaintings happening at the same time I like to do that because underpaintings are starts, and I think starting is the hardest part, <laughs> always the hardest part. And so having several underpaintings um, in progress is, to me, a really good way to never get stuck. You, you know, you never come into the studio like with a absolute no idea what you're doing, no, no blank, blank page. I don't want. I don't like that. Let's face it. The the blank page is scary. It's you know it's scary. Little broken line for these guys out here. That there is a little the that broken kind of line talks about the foliage intervening. Again, a vertical to help describe the ones that aren't. And uh, we covered this last time, but it's worth uh, repeating. Uh, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. this question says, if we are painting along and it comes out pretty good, can we sell it with no copyright issues? No. <laughs> can you repeat the question? Yeah. Um, if you are following along, and you can you sell it with no copyright issues? And the, the answer is no, um, because you're, you're following along. You've, um, this is tough, because I think following along is a great way to learn. It's a fa- fabulous, time-honored way that artists throughout art history have learned to paint. And I obviously advocate that for your, from my online lessons. It's great. However, you, when you follow along, you f- you're following along and you're participating in the process, only part of the process. You didn't take the photo. You didn't compose it. You didn't um, des- design it. And it's cer- it, you're also certainly going to be dealing with the fact that there might be dozens of them out there that are similar, right? So that's not a good thing for you. Um, so from my perspective, if you want to sell it to your neighbor or your give it to your mom and dad or your you know, whomever, that's really cool. But putting it on you know online you know and sell uh, or selling it. Um, uh, probably it's probably not a good thing for you as a painter. Um, so the idea of following along is to do things a little bit differently than you typically do, so that you um, maybe you know so you're gaining skills and insight into painting. Um, and then yeah. Take your own reference photos. Yeah, and then take your own photos and go go for it. And hopefully with some new new ideas, but no, it's probably not. Like I said, it's not. Uh, that's not from my perspective. Like, oh, I, I'm I'm so offended that you're you know copying my thing and selling it. That's not what I mean. It's just not um, good. And uh, and definitely don't um, enter a, sh- a pastel society show or something with one of those. That would be. Uh, not a good, not a good look. Yeah. Okay. All right. So now at this point, I got a, got some good stuff going, and um, so now I need to get that sky in so that I can really, really see what's going on value wise. So got my wet rag here, and I. Um, uh, wipe off my hands because I'm going to switch to a nice light value. And um, usually a nice um, light yellow is going to work really well for a sky like this. Also, um, um, most, water, uh, most pastel papers will accept water and alcohol, correct? N- um, most, the question is, most pastel papers will accept water and alcohol. Well, yeah. But you gotta you, you gotta do your research on that. Um, um, many of the, I would say many of them do. Many of the papers accept water. Mul- so are considered multimedia papers. Some take it better than others. Like I don't think Color Fix actually um, accepts it. Uh, water or alcohol very well. For one thing, it doesn't have a nice, strong, as strong a backing, and so it's going to buckle and do weird stuff. Um, also, um, yeah, so it just, and you, to me, the, the power of color fixed paper is in its, that it's a toned paper, and so uh, like an underpainting technique is not going to be very fruitful. Um, so, What's up? Oh, just checking. Okay. So I'm just getting the sky in nice and light. I'm not pushing really hard, not pressing super hard yet. I'm just kind of getting the shape, deciding on what the shape of the sky is, what I want that to be, and how this is kind of dancing through here. Start 
starting to be nice. And I've got some an area here that I want to be a larger opening sky holes. So I, this is really nice and thin, so I can get this pastel over the top, no problem. If you go too heavy to start, it's harder to it's hard to do it. So that's you know one of the main reasons I I want to stay thin. Here's a question. Um, on this part of the pastel box over here, it's getting a little bit cut off by the uh -huh. iPad. Uh, oh, okay. Um, what what is this row of these beiges? Can you talk this about this is my neutral section, and it's very important. Um, so colors that um, they're they're some colorful grays and um, some um, colors that some sticks that I would consider achromatic, meaning not having any discernible hue. Most of them have some kind of um, discernible hue. Okay, that's, that's, see that? That's nice. It's getting that. Um, but that's an important section of the palette. We should maybe next time try to get that so we can make sure we don't cut it off. So this is take some time to like really figure out. So now I'm going to just soften some of those a little bit. Yeah, that's I like this. This is um, setting up really nice. I really feel like this is all in shadow. And now I can start to pick out some of those nice brights over there. That's going to be cool. Um, so come. I'm going to start here. Let's really get that nice. Yeah, the question is, can I talk through my choices when I want to push bolder colors? Um, let me see. I'll try. Um, so when I want to do that, like I'm trying to do that today, though it's in, it's it's kind of ending up looking, and I knew this would happen, kind of that it, it's. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to push it, but it winds up being just about right, and that's kind of what usually happens. So what that tells me is that I have a tendency, when I'm not conscious about that, that it winds up being not as intense as maybe it should or as I would like, because I, I, I have a tendency to um, make things less... Uh, because I think nature is brighter and bolder than we think. Um, nature also has beautiful neutrals. So um, when I'm choosing, when I, if I see a hint like, oh, that looks a little blue. So, okay, I'm going to use that as an excuse to like really head to blue. Um, so I, I, I just try to like... Do I feel a hint of something, and I'll use it as a um, motivation to, to head to something that might be a little brighter? I also really feel like um, I try not to be afraid of any of the sticks. So, um, and not, not, and have a good understanding of color constancy and the idea that our brain tends to see color 
um, in, in a certain way, not really what it is. Our, our, our brain compensate, compensates for certain lighting situations. And um, so it really try to really see color for, for what it really is in nature. It's hard. And that must be Roger Thompson. Hi, Roger. <laughs> So that's, so color, um, pushing color, it's, um, it's, a, it's also, I'm looking at a painting also, and I'm thinking, what's it thirsty for? There's definitely that element to it. We have another question. Yeah. When you finish a painting, do you trim off the margin? Yes. Yes. When I finish a painting, do I trim off the margin? Yeah. This, yeah, people like, people get all disconcerted by this edge. Yes, that's going to go. That's, yeah, that's not going to be in the frame. Um, there are people that ask me, do, um, do, can, can I, if they want to buy an unframed piece, can, should they frame this? Well, I guess. I, I probably wouldn't. I don't think it has a per particularly interesting look, but. You know, that's a little bit more of that coming in. And eh, that's too much. I went too far on that. Let me settle that back. Okay. Um, I want to get this light on that path that I had in mind. So that's going to be tricky because how do I do that? How do I say that without... It's there. It's just not super obvious. And also, uh, do you know the color that you... Pastel that you use for the sky? No. Do I know the color that I use for the sky? No. I don't know the color names. Um, I don't try to keep track of the color names. I, I know a couple of them, and that's it. Um, I, it would drive me nuts to keep track. So I have charts of the main ones that I use, and that's it. I don't. Um, you usually use a high quality paper cutter to trim the edges of your pieces or how do you how do you trim the edges um with the scissors how do i trim the edges with the pair of scissors <laughs> i'm 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 a down to earth practical woman i want things to be easy I don't make I don't make a big deal of stuff. Okay, that's kind of fun. Maybe maybe one other spot, maybe back here. Maybe a little light is popping through. Something like that. There's a little hint of that happening back there as well. Ooh, that's kind of nice. Light. That's good. Great. I like that. A little dark on these edges here. Let this path be a little soft here and there. Maybe a little bit more of this. That starts to come together pretty nice. Where you can buy fat pastels would depend. It, it really depends on what you mean by fat. Um, there's all kinds of brands of pastels. So I would say the best thing to do is to go to Dakota Pastels. And they have everything um, pastel at, um, on their website. And they're really nice people. It's in Mount Vernon, Washington. And so they just have such a 
huge variety of brands, and you can check out different, different, something went, on. Kevin, I heard a camera go off, I don't know, so, I think it was a DSLR. Battery. Okay. So I want to get a little bit more variety of color in these darks. A little more sparkle. And so now, now I've got to dig into my little pile over here of Terry's. Is this one I wanted? I've got, this, I've got these little tiny pieces. I keep forgetting to call him. I'm going to call that guy. And now there's some idea that there's some branches in here that that's kind of nice. Nice variety of mark making in here. Get a little texture. Pull this, these darks because I want to continue with these darks across. I don't want to um, have just one spot of those. And then there's one darker branch over here too, which I think is kind of important. Kind of helps bounce across the composition a little bit. Quick question. Mm -hmm. Do you ever use pastel premier paper? Yeah, I have used Pastel Premier. The question is, do I ever use Pastel Premier? Yes, I do. Um, I it's it, it's not it's not a fave, I guess. Um, I I always try to sort of reserve judgment about papers because, you know, I kn know from just experience that I've, you know, you you kind of go in with a bias about everything that you're working with, like, oh, I love this, and oh. Th this feels one way or another. So I, I try to be open-minded about everything and just, you know, just uh, revisit things here and there. So I, I'll probably come back around to Pastel Premier at some point. Little little texture in here. So this is kind of building up kind of nice. I like, I like that it's sort of um, coming together nice and slow and um, kind of revealing itself um, in a kind of easeful way rather than sometimes you have to super fight it to get it to start coming together and then all of a sudden it's like, oh, okay, there it is. But it's kind of just gradually coming together, which is nice. Get some darks in here. See those rocks? I hardly had to do anything. I don't think I'm going to do much more. And they're there. You kind of feel them. And if I did a lot more, they would be too dominant. I don't. The story is not the rocks. The story is over in here. So. Maybe some. Got another question? Yeah, um, the question is Do you keep your new pastels mixed in with your Terry Ludwigs 
Yeah, yeah. The question is, do I keep my new pastels mixed in with my Terry Lou? Yes, every all the brands are mixed in to the palette. Like these are these are new pastels. These are Terry's. These are Unison. Um, what else? I've got some Blue Earth over here. Some Mount Visions. They're all mixed in because what I really want is I want to be. I want this. Um, value, hue, saturation, that's the overarching um, organizational principle of the palette. When I, when I go to my palette, this is where mileage comes in. I know when I pick this stick up, I, have a, I know what this is. I know it's a new pastel. I know when I put it down, it's going to do a certain, a very particular kind of thing. And I can do certain things with it that I can't do with, with this one, okay? So um, that's, that's where like m mileage and experience comes in. But having the palette organized like this, I, I'm able to orchestrate the color better. If I had to go have, if I had to have a box for new pastels and a box for, um, uh, uh, Terry Ludwig's and I and I had to be searching all over the place for everything I, I couldn't move as fast and fluidly and as dynamically as I'm able to do at least that's that's how I feel about it so um, it helps to me having my box organized like this um, helps me to be a better painter. Okay, so now I'm going to, let's see, I need to um, have an idea of time. We've been going for about an hour. Okay, okay, good. I'm going to get a little bit more color into this foreground. Maybe at the end of the video we could cut to the palette and we could talk about the palette a little more close up. Yeah, absolutely. We've had a lot of questions about the palette. Okay, we have. Oh, okay. Interesting. Or a lot of interest, I should say. Yeah, that's good. Well, maybe because we're showing it now. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that's probably why. It's cute. All right. I'm going to get into the sky a little bit more and start picking out a little bit more um, uh, of the, the shapes of those sky holes. So I'm going to wipe my hand off. But I like the painting. It's kind of fun. It's got potential. Um, when I can start to see it, you know, the value relationships and kind of see it as a unified whole that, um, you know, yeah, it's not um, all the way there. I want to build some texture and detail, I suppose, if you want to call it that here in the foreground. Some more color. Um, define the shapes a little bit more. So a little bit more quality of light on the tree trunks, I think. Um, it would be nice to have some more reflected light on them, but um, it's kind of working. So that um, helps me. It it's, uh, keeps me going. Encouraging. But the thing, you know, for me, I, 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 and I, I, I see students a lot of times kind of um, not give up, but get discouraged too soon. You know, th this one, like I said, this painting kind of, kind of easily, gra very gradually started to come together. Sometimes it doesn't work like that. Sometimes it's a little bit more of a, um, a struggle, a fight. <laughs> but um, Today, a little bit different. And 
to overdo it. I don't want to break up the, the masses too much. Get over here. Can press a little harder here because I know I'm pretty on solid ground here. Here's a question. Mm -hmm. Do you have any advice on how to uh, prevent the path from looking like it's going straight up? Yeah, you got to get that perspective. You got to get it to go around the corner. Um, yeah, you don't want it to, you know, go straight off. So it, you know, you don't want this, right? You want it to. You got to get it to go around. So um, it's drawing. That just takes some practice. It's drawing. It's perspective. soften that a little bit not too much and um, what kind of camera do you use for your photo references um, iPhone That's what Ricky said. oh yeah what kind of camera do I use for my photo references I use my iPhone and um, my friend who stopped by the studio today, Roger Thompson, Roger of Roger Thompson Photography. He is he he's, um, takes all my, he takes all the beautiful photographs that are on my website. Um, he's a, he's an iPhone dude, man. He he's he he likes that iPhone. He says, yeah, that's a good camera. Um, so I use it to take photos of my finished art, also. And a lot of the, um, a lot of the lessons that I um, produce, I'm using that iPhone to, to take um, photos of the finished pieces for the lesson. So I use it a ton. You can, you know, take lessons on how to maximize the iPhone, but, you know, I, I haven't even done that. So here's a question. Okay. Um, somebody notices that you seldomly use blue for the sky. Yeah. Um, so how do you make that choice on what color to use for the sky? So the, right, in fact, I, I, I really seldom use blue for the sky. Um, in fact, I think a lot of times it's, it's, a, it's a color that can sort of deaden the landscape because we have a tendency to make the sky too dark because we want in the, in the natural world, in the landscape, the sky is a source of light and it's, um, it's the, um, the, usually the lightest thing in the landscape um, almost always. And so um, making it blue, like if we look at my palette here, you guys, so blue like that sky blue, if you, like this is like what looks like sky blue. Look at how, how middle of the, the palette it really is compared to over here. And so if we, wanna, if we wanna have a full value range in the landscape, if we make the skies something like this, it's really hard to, to, to um, um, get that full range of value in the landscape. So um, I'm going to make this sky blue. I haven't done it yet, but my intent was to make it blue. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to make it blue in a little bit. <laughs> um, but that's really why, because um, it's really easy to get um, it too dark. Now, there's some kinds of uh, scenes, like if you're like in Taos, New Mexico, where you're really high altitude and that sky is really, you know, there's hardly any atmosphere in it. Um, and the quality of aerial perspective because there's, you know, hardly any moisture in the air. Then sometimes, you know, making the, 
the sky, you know, darker blue is warranted and will work. But on the whole, um, it's, um, to me, it's a good idea to make it lighter. And you can make it read as a blue sky. Okay. Playing around with that a little bit. Okay. Um, I'm not, I don't want to do it yet because I think it's fun to do, so I'm not going to do it yet. Can you talk a little bit about um, cloud painting and pastel? Cloud painting. So uh, what you just talked about with the sky, how does that relate if you say if the painting is uh, of clouds? Same, th it's the same. Um, the you you have you know when whenever we're we're painting we're gonna have to orchestrate the value relationships so um yeah i'm not saying never use blue but i'm but i do think that that and and then of course at the zenith the sky is you know darkest blue so you can have a you know gradual gradation so at the horizon it's a lot lighter value and usually a lot lighter value than people are are um, indicating in their paintings like clearly in this photo reference that's white um, I haven't used white. I've used a light, light, creamy yellow. If I were to make this, if I were to say, oh, well, the sky is blue, and I made it that dark, none of these relationships would hold. So um, I, I would be in trouble. So here's a, okay. another question for you. Okay. Um, Vicki points out in an earlier video, um, uh -huh. you talked about using mostly artificial lighting in your studio. Yep. Um, do you try to use color balanced light bulbs or just what's available at the big box store? And we did quite a bit of work on the studio for the yeah. lighting, so. Yeah, we did. We, we went to, what was it called again? We went to globe lighting, globe lighting. and we, we got, um, but we're, our considerations in the studio are a little different because we're shooting video. So we're trying to keep all the lighting, um, not necessarily natural light where we just want we want all the lights to be the same temperature that's our main concern yep and all the lights are 2700k yeah they're 20 all the lights are 2700k and that's um so it's not um you know if you were talking about like an ideal like north light situation we don't have that and I, but I've never had that in my in a studio that I've worked in, so I you know it doesn't disturb me in any way. Um, uh, so w we just try to keep it as balanced as we can, um, and that's that's the main consideration for us. But um, so it's kind of different. All right, I'm going to do a couple more things here, and um, then I'm going to kind of see where I'm at. I think I like it. I'm going to just move a little more quickly. I'm just going to speed it up a little bit so that um, I can get this mostly where I want it to be. think no oh. some I no that's a little too light 
this is all in shadow, so I want to make sure it stays in shadow. So I can't get anything too light in value. And also, you wipe your hands off quite often while you're working, or no? Yes, I wipe my hands off if I'm switching values dramatically so that I, um, I'm not muddying the color. Also, uh, do you ever paint figures in pastel? Yes, I do paint figures. The question is, do I ever paint figures? Yes, I do. I, you know, my background is an illustrator, so I, you know, I feel really, um, I love doing figures. In fact, I did a, a whole series of figurative pastels a number of years ago. I love doing them. They, um, they're really fun to do. They didn't sell particularly well, and at that point, I wasn't as involved in the lessons as I am now. And so I was, you know, I needed to make a living. So they didn't, um, they didn't sell as well. So I didn't um, pursue them as much as it would have been nice to have been able to do. Sometimes, unfortunately, as an artist, you're driven a little bit by other factors than your absolute desire to, to paint a thing. Which is okay. Sometimes that necessity is the mother of invention. Okay. Which is really fine. Also, uh, do you clean your pastels often? Um, I wouldn't say the question is do I clean my pastels often? And I wouldn't say often. Um, I would say that I, I clean them when I necessary when I when I'm out on the road, which isn't hasn't hasn't been and isn't going to be for a while, I guess. Teaching work, live workshops, I take with me a, a small um, my travel set of pastels, and I need to clean those off quite frequently. And I, what, so what I do is I bring with me a little a feather duster. From, do we have one? Oh, could you grab that? Um, I bring this feather duster with me, and um, I clean them off with with this, boop boop boop, like so. And it's just from Walmart, um, <laughs> and um, it works really well. You want to do that outside with a mask on, of, of course, because it really kicks up a lot, and. Um, but it works really well. Um, in the studio here, uh, if they get about once a year, I'll go through and really do a really cull the duplicates out, really clean them, use cornmeal to clean to clean them, and so on and so forth. But um, in between, I can my um, this tray is on a table that's on wheels. We can wheel it outside. And give it give it the once over with the feather duster, which is kind of cool. So just to clarify for some people, um, there's a few questions going. Yeah. You sell your work on Daily Paint Works. Yes. And then you also sell um, your your art lessons on your website. Yes, my lessons, pastel painting. Um, I'm not, I'm sorry. I'm going to get in trouble. Painting lessons with Marla .com. Um, is my lesson site, so we have lessons in pastel, oil, watercolor, and eventually we're going to have some um, acrylic lessons. And do you still do you still sell paintings on your website or mainly through Daily Paint Works? Um, yes, my website you can um, purchase directly from my website, which is marlabagetta.com. Um, you can't get the lessons there. Um, you can buy paintings there, but um, you know my focus in the last several years has been on my um, lesson site. So it's hard to keep everything up. So I've kind of um, most of my sales are you know most of my postings for sale are on daily paintwork, smaller unframed paintings, which is really manageable. So I still get to sell and. Um, create art for sale, but I um, it's uh, not quite as um, 
cumbersome. So it's good. It's hard to do it all. It's really... Okay. So let's... I want to do just a couple more things here. And I think pretty in pretty good shape. Did I exaggerate color? Well, I don't know. A little bit. Um, I think a little. Maybe not, not as much as I had in mind, which I'm also not surprised about. I got a few of the things that I really wanted, so that's nice. Um, I'm going to go ahead and try to get a, a, a little sense of blue sky, and then I'm going to get some reflected light on some of these tree trunks. I also don't have the little um, characteristic birch marks on there. I'd like to get some of those, and then I think I'll see where I'm at. So here's an aqua pastel, pretty dark. So now that sky is going to read as a blue sky. When you look at that, you're going to go, oh, that's a blue sky. And that's all I need. And I've got this kind of blue, um, I don't know if you guys noticed, these blue on the edges here. And that's also going to further the idea that the sky is indeed blue. Can do it a little bit, a little almost like a little lens flare on the edges here, um, just here and there. And so my sky will read as blue. Here's another question. Okay. Uh, do you still have your old pastel box hanging on the wall in your studio? Yes. Who's asking that? That'll be Julie. Julie who? Julie Newhouse. Julie Newhouse. Julie. Hi, Julie. Yes, I still have it. It's hanging right. It's right. It's it's right there. Um, we can show it. I have it. I love it. It's really pretty. I'm gonna get that a little. That's also, nice. uh, do you decide the frame size and the image size before you begin painting? Do I, the question is, do I decide the frame size and the image size before I begin painting? I used to when I was really involved in, in doing um, lots, of, lots and lots of um, um, gallery shows and arts, you know, art sales um, in, that, in that way and festivals. Um, so I would kind of paint to a standard size um, that was going to get framed. Um, but I don't do that anymore. Um, but that's a good idea to do, for sure. It's a really good idea. Okay. Um, let's see. Let's be a little playful with the light kind of popping through here and there. And now the last thing I want to do is get that, the, that reflected light on some of these trees. I don't know if that's it. Let's see. Maybe, maybe, um, yeah, that's, that's a little better. I don't want to do overdo it. I don't need to. nice.
So another uh-huh. question, mm-hmm. um, more of a historical question. Yeah. How did you get involved with painting with pastels? How did I, yeah. The question is, how did I get involved with painting with pastels? So, um, yeah, so my background was, I, I was an illustrator and I painted in all kinds of media when I worked as an illustrator. And um, when my kids were uh, little, I, I, I took time off to, um, to be a mom for a few years. <laughs> Um, when they were really little, and when I could kind of find my way back to um, painting and working as an illustrator, I also just kind of, we had moved to Oregon, and I just kind of wanted to do something more creative for myself, and um, my ex-husband was involved with an arts, a community arts organization that was putting on a little show, um, a local show, and and he wasn't sure about people's whether people would submit stuff or how you know how it would go, and he's like, I you know I don't know, and so he encouraged encouraged me to. He's Marla, you got to put something in the show, and so I like okay, and um, I had a little box of Rembrandt pastels and all my stuff and just a little a box of 12 Rembrandt pastels, and I had some can- black cans on paper, and I um, went out and took some photographs of s- some landscape, local landscape, rural scenes, and I started painting in pastel, and that was that. And I started, and those, those little pieces sold, in the show, and um, they were really fun to do. And then I started entering um, uh, um, some uh, regional pastel society shows and got involved in a pastel society. And there, you know, pretty soon I was getting invited to teach workshops, and that was it. I just kept going, kept going and going. So it's been a long time now, and it's 30 something years. So been doing it a while and I love it I still my breath is still taken away when I walk out here in the morning and I see those sitting out there they're so beautiful and they're um, an evolving medium in terms of what materials what's available out there so very dynamic that way but that's been really fun lots of innovations in the pastel world and lots of support you know pastel society of america iaps lots of great people richard mckinley and um you know just i've met so many great people through the years I want to settle this down. I'm not, I'm not liking that as much. Okay, I think I'm pretty close. Okay, yeah, I think I'm pretty close. I'm going to wrap up. Got a little bit of work to do on this that I'd like to do, but it's pretty much there. So I will um, schedule another stream. I don't know whether I'm going to be doing um, pastel or watercolor next time, but we'll see. We'll play around with it. Really enjoying doing these streaming events for you guys. And if you like the events and you want us, you know, continue to help us, help us out. Go, make sure you go and visit our my website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and check out what we have there. And if you're the watercolor um, workshop, super fun. We have Facebook groups um, associated with all the workshops, and pe- you can submit work and get feedback and be part of the community of artists. So um, check it out. Cool. All right, cool. You want to say goodbye? Yep. All right, let's turn around. Okay. All right, you guys. Um, thanks. Thanks for watching today. Really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves, and I will. 
See you next time. Um, okay, see you. Bye-bye.